the firms. Today I'm going to be doing a very fun video. I decided to do recommendations based on Riverdale characters because I feel like each character has a very distinct thing about them so it's very easy to find recommendations for books that you might like if there's a particular character who's your favorite. So in honor of this video I'm wearing my Riverdale Vixens shirt that I got at Hot Topic and I've got my ponytail going. I'm excited. I had the idea for this video when I was binge watching the second season of Riverdale so I could catch up in order to watch season three once it premiered which I still need to do. Maybe I've done it by the time this video goes up who knows. Basically I'm just gonna tell you a character and then I'm gonna tell you a book based on that character. So first is Betty Cooper and for her I'm choosing My Life Next Door. Betty has lived next door to Archie for her whole life. They've always been neighbors. And this story follows a girl named Sam who has lived next door from this Reed family that she has always found fascinating. Sometimes she'll go up to her roof just to like watch them from there because she thinks they're so interesting but her mother has always warned her away and she's never been able to really interact with them because her mother doesn't think that they're like the right kind of people. There are some similarities here between Betty's mom and Sam's mom. So Sam's mom is a politician and she's always trying to keep up appearances but Sam ends up befriending Jace who is the boy next door. The two of them end up forming this relationship but Sam has to keep it secret from her mother because she doesn't want to get in trouble. It ends up being a very heart-wrenching story as you keep reading. It took a turn that I was really not expecting at all often the way that Riverdale does and I really enjoyed this one. I thought the writing was just wonderful. So I definitely check this out if you like Betty Cooper. Next on my list is Veronica Lodge. So Veronica is the new girl to Riverdale. She's just moved from New York. She's definitely on the much fancier side than the rest of the residents in Riverdale. And for her, I chose The Thousandth Floor by Katherine McGee. This is a book that is a little bit different because it's actually a sci-fi novel. It takes place in New York City in the future. And in this world, everybody in New York lives in this one building and depending on how high you live in the building that really determines like your social status so the lower you are the poorer you are and the higher like closer to the top you are the more wealthy you are this book follows a couple of different characters and you get their different perspectives and the way that it starts off is that there is a character that actually falls to their death after this party and then the book goes back a couple of months and shows you all of the events leading up to that person falling but you don't know who it is that actually fell until you get to the end of the story so again, that also kind of ties into Riverdale because there's always some kind of mystery going on, always some kind of murder happening in that crazy town. But The Thousandth Floor was a really interesting read and it really held my interest and I really loved all of the fun bits of technology that were added to this future New York and I would love if some of them could be realized at some point. But if you enjoy Veronica Lodge's character, I would definitely recommend checking out The Thousandth Floor. Next on my list is Cheryl Blossom, who is personally one of my favorite characters on the show. I really enjoy her. I think that she is such a strong female and she just entertains me to no end and I love the way that she speaks. For Cheryl, I decided to go with the Burn for Burn series because Cheryl is a character that you do not want to cross under any circumstance. If you go against her in any way, she will get you back. And I just thought that this series, which is a revenge series, worked so perfectly for her. So this this book follows our three main characters and each of them are hellbent on getting revenge on someone who has wronged them in the past. It's a trilogy so things really tend to escalate as you continue reading the books. I was completely taken by surprise. This is the actually the only series that I've ever binge read the entire thing like one book after another because I was just like but what's gonna happen next? I had to know. It was it's like Riverdale in that sense that it's so addicting that you just can't stop reading. It's like compulsively readable. Lilia was my favorite character in the series. So this series is actually written by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian. It was co-written, but I think it was pretty clear that Lilia was Jenny's character. So I really enjoyed this. It took a twist like at the end of the second book that I just did not see coming at all. I was under the impression that this was a contemporary series and then they kind of threw a supernatural element in there and I was like, hold on, what's going on now? But overall, I thought it was just such a fun series and like I said, I read the whole thing so quickly and if you're someone that likes Cheryl Blossom, I really think that you'll also enjoy the Burn for Burn series. Next on my list is another favorite character and that is Jughead Jones. And for him, I am choosing This Is Our Story by Ashley Elston. So this is a book that I talk about constantly because 
I love it. So it's with good reason. Jughead is the writer of the town. He is constantly writing exposés and he is just going and digging in and finding out information and trying to find out the truth. He's always searching for truth. I love Jughead's narrative and I feel like he is just hands down one of the best characters on the show. But that's why I chose This Is Our Story because this book follows a girl named Kate. She's interning for the DEA's office and she gets involved in this case where there are five boys who go into the woods and one of them ends up getting shot. The four other boys who returned alive from the woods are not talking. They won't tell anyone what it is that happened to that fifth boy and Kate is searching for the truth and trying to uncover what went on and get justice for this boy. So I feel like Kate and Jughead have a lot in common in that sense and Kate was such a great character to read from. I really loved the mystery in this one and I also enjoy the mysteries that happen in Riverdale too so I felt like this was the perfect book for Jughead. The next character that I'm going to talk about is Josie McCoy who is the lead singer of Josie and the Pussycats, as I'm sure you're all well aware. Josie is very musical and I really like her. She has kind of a no-nonsense attitude. So for her, I chose the book Fireworks by Katie Catugno. This book actually takes place in Orlando in the early 90s during the whole like boy band and solo female singer craze like the Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera days and this follows a group of girls who are put together like they're kind of thrown together to be in this all-girl band. One of the girls that gets chosen is not someone that ever wanted to sing or be in a band or anything but she goes with her best friend to her best friend's audition and she ends up getting recognized and kind of thrown into this situation and all of them are living together in Orlando in an apartment and there is just constant issues going on between the girls who are all trying to navigate this new life for themselves and figure out what it is that they're trying to get out of this experience and also perform put out songs and all that kind of stuff so I again I thought this was just perfect for Josie. Next on my list is Archie Andrews. So I have to say that it was so easy for me to pick books for every character with the exception of Archie. Archie is my least favorite character on Riverdale, which is funny because he's supposed to be the main character, but I just feel like he has like almost no personality. I had such a clear view of, of things that like went so perfectly with everyone else, but with him I was just like, uh, I ended up landing on the Hundred Oaks series by Miranda Kinali for him. The Hundred Oaks series is actually a series of seven books. All of them take place at the same high school, but they're all companion books. So each book in the series follows a different set of characters. Each of the main characters is a female who is in sports and Archie is in football. So that was the only thing that I could think of. The first book in the series is Catching Jordan and that follows a female football player. So that is how I'm tying it back to Archie. I really enjoyed Catching Jordan and there's also a short Christmas story that goes along with it that was really adorable too. But all of the books that I've read within the series have been really cute reads. They're all sports romances. They just leave you feeling like happy and fulfilled. So I definitely recommend checking these out. I like them better than I like Archie if I'm being honest. <laughs> Number seven on my list are Hermione and Hiram Lodge and these are Veronica's parents. And for these characters I would choose The Devouring Gray by Christine Lynn Herman. This is a new book that's actually coming out in April of 2019 so it's one to like have on your radar. I've talked about it a couple of times but I really really enjoyed it and I think that you guys will too. The reason that I chose The Devouring Gray for Hermione and Hiram is because Hermione and Hiram are kind of like running Riverdale and they're doing all of these shady sneaky things that are going on and Veronica sometimes becomes privy to the things that they're doing and sometimes she tries to intervene and stop them but she's not always successful and they do tend to usually be like one step ahead of things that are going on. They are shady shady people. The Devouring Grey also takes place in a small town. It also follows a girl who used to live in a much bigger city and then moves to this small town and she's one of the descendants so her parents grew up there as well as the parents of the other descendants. It's kind of a place where no one leaves and she gets kind of thrown into this world and you just see all of the crazy things that her parents have done and the other 
kid's parents have done, and it felt very fitting to go along with Hermione and Hiram, because again, they're always pulling strings. There is this impending threat from a creature called the Beast that's living in the woods. It's up to the founders to make sure that the town stays safe, but the town kind of starts revolting against them because there are some bodies that show up. The same thing happens. <laughs> there are definitely bodies that pile up when Hermione and Hiram are involved in any sense. The next character on my list is Pop Tate, who runs Pop's Diner, and it's where you can often find Archie and Betty and Veronica and Jughead sitting down to have cheeseburgers and milkshakes. For this one, I decided to go with Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian. This is a book that I read last year, right when it came out, and I really loved it, and I'm very much looking forward to reading it again next year, like right when I'm getting into prime ice cream season, because it really got me very excited for spring. And this one follows a girl named Amelia who works at an ice cream stand in her local town, much like Pop Tate does. And Amelia actually gets chosen to be head girl at this establishment for the summer, which is a huge honor. And she's like so grateful that she's gotten it, but she's also not that sure of herself. She really thought that her best friend who was much more confident would be the one to be promoted to be the head girl. So she's kind of trying to figure things out. On her first day when she's going in to open up for the season, she ends up finding the body of the owner. The owner was uh, was much older, so it, this is not like a murder mystery by any means. It's just that Amelia has a lot more challenges ahead of her because in addition to running the ice cream stand, she also has to figure out a lot more behind the scenes stuff that are going on with the business because there's a lot to figure out. For the first time ever, there's a boy named Grady who is Amelia's grandson and he ends up coming and taking over and trying to figure out how to effectively run this business and Amelia has to figure out how to keep the spirit of girlhood that's just always been there, that safe space for everybody in addition to working with Grady and not upsetting essentially her new boss. And then last on my list is the Black Hood, who as you probably know, is the main villain in the second season of Riverdale. He has been going around causing havoc and hurting people within the town. So for this one, I ended up choosing The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. In this, we get the perspective of Alex, whose sister was murdered and the killer ended up walking free. So Alex is really mad at society because she doesn't understand how this could possibly happen, that her sister's killer wouldn't be brought to justice. So Alex takes it upon herself to take revenge and to get justice for her sister. And she actually gets away with it. Alex is fully aware of herself and the way that she is. So she knows that she can't be trusted by other people. She never gets close to anyone because she doesn't want to hurt anyone who doesn't deserve to be hurt. But she is not afraid to stand up for herself and for her sister, obviously. But this ends up being a really compelling story. It's a really fascinating social commentary on how messed up the justice system can be and just violence against women. And it was really, really a powerful read. It's hard to say that it was enjoyable. It was one that I read very quickly because I was so invested in the story, but it definitely like drudged up a lot of emotion. Figured this was fitting for the Black Hood. So those are all of the recommendations that I have for you today. I hope that you guys enjoyed them. I hope that you'll enjoy these books if you decide to check any of them out. I think it was kind of fun that each of them was a contemporary book, but kind of had a, like a thrillery spin to it, much in the way that Riverdale does. So let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know if there are any other characters that you feel like I should have mentioned that I didn't mention. I feel like I tried to cover everyone that was like main characters. But that's all that I have for this video, and I will see you guys soon in a new one. Bye!